Mobility or flexibility? What's the difference and which one do you need to work on? Stay tuned to find out. Hi everyone and welcome to Exercise for Health. I'm Richard and today I want to help you understand the difference between mobility and flexibility and what you should be focusing on depending on what your goal is. This is the first of a course of nine videos I've planned on this topic so if this interests you or you're new to this channel we offer tips, advice and exercises each week to help you manage your health condition and fitness levels so go ahead and tap the subscribe button below and then the bell icon to be notified of when we upload a new video. So many clients I've seen over the last 25 years, understandably, don't fully know the difference between mobility and flexibility. And occasionally, fitness instructors sometimes phrase them in a sentence as though they're the same thing. So let's clarify how they differ by first looking at what each of them actually means. Mobility is a term used to describe the range of movement of a joint, like the hip, shoulder or spine. The key words here being movement and joint. Flexibility is the term referring to the ability to stretch a muscle to its maximum length. So the key words here being stretch and muscle. Therefore, mobility is looking at how much you can move your body or limbs, so it's dynamic, whereas flexibility is looking at how far you can extend your body into a position or posture, so it's static. Let me demonstrate with an example. Here I am, led down on the floor, moving, or flexing in this case, my hip joint, by pulling my knee towards my chest to find my range of movement in the hip. You can see that as I'm moving dynamically, I get to about 130 degrees of flexion in my hip before it feels restricted. So this is showing you the amount of mobility I have in my hip joint. Now here, I am lying in the same position, but this time my son is assisting me to move my leg into a position until I feel a stretch on my hamstring, the muscle on the back of my upper leg. Although he seems to be enjoying this a little bit too much. Now I'm still flexing the hip joint, but you can see that as I now have my leg straight, the muscle is playing more of a role with how much I'm able to move my hip joint, which is now only about 90 degrees. So this is showing the amount of flexibility I have in my hamstring muscles. So our body's ability to move is greatly affected by both the mobility of the joints and the flexibility of the muscles which in turn can then have a profound effect on how we can function day to day. Poor mobility leads to difficulties in conducting day to day movements such as putting your shoes or socks on in the morning, reaching for a seatbelt in your car, placing something up high onto a shelf or getting something from a low cupboard. In addition, condi conditions such as osteoarthritis can affect mobility because as movement of the joint becomes more painful over time, it then loses mobility because a person is reluctant to move into or through any pain. Poor flexibility though leads to biomechanical changes as the tight muscles affect the way we sit or stand and this can lead then to other symptoms in the body. For example, tight hamstrings can be a precursor to lower back pain. This is why being sat down at a desk for long periods of time can shorten the hamstrings if they're not being used and then that can then lead to chronic back pain in the long term and this is a condition that affects 40% of adults in the UK. So which one should you be focusing on? Well, it depends on what your goal is. If your goal is to be able to function more effectively day to day, to decrease the stiffness that you feel in the morning or every time you stand up, or just be able to carry out tasks more effectively, then you should be focusing on proving your mobility. However, if your goal is to be able to do the splits <coughs> or be able to get into postures that are outside the day to day positions you would normally adopt, like a yoga class, or you have an imbalance in the body due to excessively tight muscles from a sedentary lifestyle like the hamstrings or the chest muscles, then you should follow a flexibility program. For most people, you may have to do a bit of both, but that's not a bad thing. So how do you improve them? Well, for mobility, you move more. For flexibility, you stretch more. Essentially, being active and exercising more frequently will help you with both mobility, if you ensure you take your joints through their full range of movement, and flexibility, as exercising the muscles increases the body's temperature, which will then help you lengthen the muscle tissue even further. Most exercise sessions, including those I have done on this channel, will involve a warm-up, including a movement and mobility exercises, 
as well as post-workout cool-down involving stretching and flexibility exercises. Here are some examples of mobility exercises for the shoulder, the spine, and the hips. And here are some examples of flexibility exercises. So for the hamstrings or back thigh muscles, the pecs or chest muscles, and the calf muscles. There are different methods of stretching for flexibility and many different ways you can mobilize each joint in the body. And over the coming weeks, as I mentioned in the introduction, I plan to have developed more short of 10, 15 minute routines for each mobility and flexibility. So if you're subscribed to this channel, you'll be notified of when I upload them, so then you can follow along with me. So I hope this video has been helpful. If so, please give it a thumbs up as that helps out this channel. And if you have any questions on this topic, please comment below and I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video today, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click here to subscribe to this channel or click here to watch a recent video. See you soon.